Hello everyone and welcome to the Aussie Live conference. Um, this is the second day of our conference and I'm really pleased to be able to um, introduce you to Jenny Rankin who's going to be talking about one of those really topical subjects in schools now, improve your reporting tools to triple educators data analysis um, accuracy. So a very topical presentation, Jenny, which we really look forward to hearing about. Just to thank the sponsors of this conference, because without them it would not be able to go ahead. So we have um, The Learning Revolution, who's worked in partnership with the Australia E-Series. Coach Carol Shambles Guru have been sponsors, as has been the Cyber Academy and Blackboard Collaborate. We would love to know where in the world you are from. So uh, just a few of us here, but we do come from different corners of the country. Uh, Jenny, I don't know if you can click on the pointer tool and then grab one of those little emoticons. Oh, well done. <laughs> so we can see where you're from. And Carol is a little bit, oh, we're both there in Australia. So interesting, interesting topic, Jenny. Really look forward to seeing how can we improve um, the reporting tools to triple our accuracy of data analysis. Over to you, Jenny. So Jenny, we just need you to click on your microphone or the talk button and then we'll be able to hear you. Great, Jenny. Now we can see you. Oh, thank, Don't worry. Thank you. thank you so much, Anne. Um, I'm Dr. Jenny Grant Rankin. Hello and welcome. Um, I'm an educator who has been a teacher, a school administrator, and a district administrator, and I've also served as chief education and research officer for educational technology data systems, um, a data system company. And in this session, we're going to look at specific ways that ed tech reporting tools can be improved to triple educators' data analysis accuracy when using these ed tech tools, and we'll look at some of the research that informs these improvements. We know that educators armed with data to inform decisions is a powerful tool to transform learning. However, data can transform learning in a bad way if educators misunderstand the data and thus use it to make poor decisions. This presentation will examine a largely overlooked culprit that interferes with data's ability to help educators make a difference. And that culprit is the manner in which data is communicated to educators with that educational technology. You will learn how to add research proven supports to your own data systems and reporting technology so that educators using the data can do so with significantly increased accuracy. And references to research will appear on the slides at the bottom. Let's take a look at the problem we need to overcome. Data-informed decision-making, often called data-driven decision-making, is a process educators employ to transform learning and improve student success. First, educators view data in reports generated by a data system, which is any computer system educators can use to access and analyze student data. And there are many different types of data systems, but they all can be used on the computer to give educators data-based feedback on entities such as students. Most educators have access to these data systems for gener generating and analyzing score reports. Um, though 44% of educators use these data systems directly, whereas the majority view printed versions of reports that others used the, the data systems to generate for them. But whether they're viewing reports on a computer or in their hands, stemming from the computer, these data reports generally originate in data systems. There are many types of data systems which generally house data, like a data warehouse, but also arrange the data within topic-specific or data-specific reports with the goal of educators being able to use those data reports to inform decisions. Overall, most educators are eager to analyze this data to make decisions, but they cannot make correct analyses if they do not understand how to do so. 
For example, one of the most comprehensive studies over here in the U.S. on educator data use was conducted by the U.S. Department of Education at nine school districts known nationally for strong data use. But despite these reputations, researchers found teachers answered only 48% of questions correctly when interpreting data. In another study at 13 school districts also considered exemplars of data use, the U.S. Department of Ed found teachers achieved, again, only 48% accuracy when making inferences about data involving basic statistical concepts. Their report noted it's unlikely other districts would perform any better. To improve student learning, educators must know how to correctly analyze student data, yet many do not. For example, many teachers and administrators do not know fundamental data analysis concepts, and 70% have never taken a college or postgraduate course in educational measurement. The bottom line is educators use data to impact students. Um, data can be a good thing, but when educators misunderstand the data they get from data systems, these misunderstandings cripple data use in school districts. Sadly, there's an abundance of evidence educators of all levels are making data analyses that are commonly incorrect. It surprises a lot of people, and it surprised me as well being an educator, knowing these are smart, well-educated people. This led me to research what is currently being done to improve educators' inaccurate data analyses. In most literature, the responsibility of improving analyses was placed with the educators themselves. Most school districts are employing solutions that fall into two categories. One is professional development, or PD, involving classes or training or other formats to teach educators how to better analyze data. The other solution relates to staff, involving staffing hires or arrangements such as strong data leaders, teams, or experts. PD and staff tend to be beneficial to data use, and they're definitely recommended. However, neither approach is foolproof for achieving data confidence. For example, in one study where teachers received PD and measurement, all teachers struggled afterwards with statistical terms and measurement concepts. Likewise, staff supports do not always operate as intended. Knowledge management research, for example, indicated knowledge can be hard to share with others, even when the intention to share it is there, and especially when power or status is involved. Given that educators are already doing what they can to improve their data analyses, yet these highly educated and intelligent professionals continue to struggle despite So Jenny, if you just remember to click the talk button again, you can resume that with this slide. Thank you so much. Uh, resuming with this slide, given that educators are already doing what they can to improve their data analyses, yet these highly educated, intelligent professionals continue to struggle despite added PD and staffing, we need to consider the tool these educators use for data analysis. There is extensive evidence that data systems do have an impact on educators' data use. They can include supports that likely improve educators' data use, but almost no data systems offer such supports. So I researched a field where the product is known to feature comprehensive support in the use of its content. I researched over-the-counter medication where it would be negligent to not help users understand how to use the content. People using over-the-counter medication can read how to use the product's content through very
Okay, I think we have problems with Jenny and her microphone again. So we will rectify that problem and be back with you soon. Thank you. Okay, connecting back again, um, there's already evidence concerning benefits for educators when a help when a health system was added to data system environment. Um, and if your data system doesn't feature a health system, you definitely want to ask for one or create one yourself using something like Screen Step. Um, there's also an abundance of evidence concerning the positive impact of educators on educators' data analyses when student data is packaged or displayed more effectively. And of course, there's evidence that uh, data reports need to contain appropriate content, just like the data system itself needs appropriate content. However, my own study tried to fill the gaps in existing research and looked at what happens to educators' data analyses when data systems contain detailed labels next to data, such as report footers or when data systems contain supplemental documentation, such as reference sheets or reference guides, to help educators use data correctly. So all five of these supports, which help ensure appropriate use and understanding of a product's content, can be applied to educators' data reporting tools, where they can help ensure appropriate use and understanding of data being reported to educators. Let's start by talking about the first two, which offer report-specific textual support for educators analyzing data. Most data systems currently report data without added support in how to correctly analyze the data, thus failing to contain footers offering information pertinent to correct analyses, failing to offer reference sheets, which can be thought of as one-page reference sheets to accompany reports, and failing to offer reference guides, which guide educators in the use of a report's data. So I conducted a quantitative study to determine the degree to which including three different forms of data usage guidance within a data system reporting environment could make a difference. I employed a cross-sectional sampling procedure and had responses from 211 educators spanning all school levels and from a range of demographics. And it was found these supports significantly improve educators' understanding of the data contents, much like including different forms of usage guidance So it was found all of these supports significantly improve educators' understanding of the data contents, just like including different forms of usage guidance with over-the-counter medication is needed to, pro to properly communicate how to use its contents. All supports investigated in the study had a significant impact on educators' data analysis accuracy. In the control group, where participants used the same data as other participants but had no embedded supports, educators answered only 11% of data analysis questions correctly when looking at those data reports. 87% of them indicated they would have used added supports such as footers, reference sheets, or reference guides if they had received them. When a footer was simply present, regardless of its use, data analysis was 307% more accurate. When footers were present, they were used 73% of the time. And when footers were used, data analysis was 307% more accurate. When a reference sheet was simply present, regardless of its use, data analysis was 205% more accurate. And when those reference sheets were used, they were used 50% of the time. When they were used, they were 300% more accurate. When a reference guide was simply present regardless of its use, data analysis was 273% more accurate. 
those guides were used 52% of the time, in which case data analyses was 436% more accurate. Overall, when any one of these three supports was simply present, regardless of its use, data analysis was 264% more accurate. And thanks for the comments on the data. I so appreciate it. Uh, when the supports were present, they were used 58% of the time. And when the supports were used, data analysis was 355% more accurate. Since all supports were wanted, well used, and significantly effective, let's take a look at how the supports can be structured or added to a data system. A footer specific to that particular report's data should be present at the bottom of each report, just like you'd see label, a label on a product like over-the-counter medication. The footer should communicate only the most vital information an educator would need to analyze this particular set of data correctly, such as stopping him or her from making a mistake educators might commonly make with a particular report. Since users who are analyzing the data incorrectly often don't know they're analyzing the data incorrectly, the footer should not be easy to overlook, so it should match the font size of the rest of the report. And it should also follow length guidelines and aim for brevity. It, it will not be read if the footer is too long. So some sample guidelines are given here, and these are sample guidelines that, that we've used, utilized to find those results in the study that were so effective. Report-specific reference sheets and reference guides should also be present, accessible via links from the report, and they should be printable, and educators should be able to save them as PDF files so they can send them to others. Uh, free templates are available on my website. I modeled these after the, the actual guides and sheets that I used in my study that were shown to be effective. And those free templates, you can use them to, um, to create your, your own sheets and guides for your own data system that you're using. All reference sheets you create should be consistent in appearance, and the type of content they provide should also be consistent, and that makes them easier for educators to use. And on the note of, each of this uh, content, what they contain, I have some images we can look at. At the top, you would have your title and a description of the report, as well as an image of the report so it's clear which report this reference sheet should be used with. Then you would have the report's purpose, such as a list of key questions the report can help educators answer. And in giving the report's focus, the reference sheet can answer who is the intended audience, what data is reported, and how is the data reported. Finally, the warning addresses whatever concept educators most commonly misunderstand when analyzing data in this particular report. The warning should also provide educators with the correct way to avoid the common, common errors. As for a report's reference guide, it's like an expanded version of the reference sheet. Since some users need a little more guidance than others, and you want to support all types of data users. Oh, thanks for the comment on the visuals. That's very sweet. Uh, thus, the first page of a report's reference guide is identical to the report's reference sheet, though the page numbers have been added um, and it's labeled as a reference guide. After that, you have an additional page two or three, whatever you need to walk educators through the use of a report. So look, let's look at those extra pages. At the top of page two, you would have some instructions actually illustrating how to read the report. And after that, you would have the essential questions section, which may span multiple pages. Basically, you take each question, key question, featured on the first page's purpose section, and you walk the reader through exactly how to use the report to answer that specific question. For example, show the user where to look on the report, uh, what to look for, et cetera. And examples are particularly helpful. At the end of the reference guide, add a more info section to, to point to the educator in the right direction for assistance with any likely needs he or she might have, additional places to look, and so on. Now let's talk about the next way to make data over the counter for educators using the data. 
prior to my study, there was already an abundance of research suggesting the power of adding health systems to data systems, accessible through an ever-present help button like you see in the upper right corner of this slide. Uh, just as 50 million people per year use the online health system WebMD, educators using data also crave a way to search topics and have their data-related questions answered. For example, according to Vandermesh 2008, a shorter targeted manual or user-friendly help system causes users to need 40% less training time and to successfully complete 50% more tasks than they would have accomplished with only access to a typical full-size model. Lessons that can help users use the data system should be present. These can help educators find, share, and run reports, among other tasks. Standards I'll talk about in a bit will help you implement an effective research-based health system. Less common in ed tech and in data systems are data analysis lessons. These topic-based lessons are crucial to offering increased support within a data system to educators using data. One of the most important ways to make data over-the-counter for educators is the package or the display of the reports. You would never ingest medicine from a product with an outdated expiration date, a misspelled label, and other appearance infractions. Effectively displayed data is equally important for anyone consuming that data to help kids, and that means educators. There are too many display guidelines to list for you today, um, though they are all featured in the standards I'll direct you to at the end of this presentation, so I'll just demonstrate a few. Uh, in this graph, from a typical data system report, a school site's performance on a high-stakes test is shown in light blue, and other entities are graphed in other shades. Though the graph looks simple at first, it is nearly impossible and definitely slow to determine this school site's performance in these different areas like word analysis, reading comprehension, literary response, and so on. Um, the, and that's because bad reporting practices are used, like 3D shadows that can fool the eye, uh, data isn't displayed directly above the bars, there are too many bars, and so on. Worse, this extremely common graph is totally misleading for this particular assessment because performance in different domains on this test cannot be judged from the school site scores alone. Uh, rather, you have to, well, the test, the test domains different difficulty, so you have to subtract the site's test scores from one of these other bars for each domain to garner meaning. And most educators don't know this, we know they're very busy, um, and thus this assessment's domains are only analyzed with 11% effectiveness here in California, which is very scary. <laughs> I like your comments as well. Um, this other display, though it might look more confusing at first, is actually more effective for this particular assessment. Reporting problems are removed and the graph is simplified. Even though all the same data is present, only the most important data is graphed in a prominent way. Basically, those subtractions that you need to make, those calculations, are the ones graphed because those are the ones that give the data meaning in this case. Thus, even if you didn't know much about this graph, just knowing from the title that it shows the site's performance is enough, as you can guess the site's weaker areas from the red bars that drop below zero, and you can guess the strong areas from the green bars that shoot above zero. So lastly, we know content is important. If you took a cold remedy to cure your cold, yet the pills contain nothing but sugar and food coloring, it would surely not cure your cold. A report's contents are equally crucial. The best way to tackle report contents are housed in the reporting standards that I've created for stakeholders such as yourself to benefit from. And I'll talk about those on this next slide. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you like my analogy. Uh, my research website, which I hope you also like, um, is listed here at the top, www.overthecounterdata.com. And this is where I house um, research that I follow on this topic, um, different resources, all, all kinds of things that you might find of interest. Um, it contains, for example, a reference list for all of the sources that I cited in this presentation. 
And it also contains other important tools for improving the effectiveness um, of your own reporting tools, whether that's a data system you manage yourself, one that you use from, oh, thanks for putting my link up, that was sweet, uh, one that you use from an outside vendor, whatever it is, you can use these standards to improve the reporting environment for the other educators who use these tools. It features reporting standards that I created. And on this slide, you can see just the first page of those standards. It's an eight-page packet. But it has all of the specific standards that, that research has informed. And that's research from not just education, but from other areas like behavioral economics, from data visualization, lots of different fields that we can pull from to improve the data systems we give to educators. And these standards um, I created based on 15 years of research that I've made into this topic on which, as you might go, so I'm very passionate. Um, any data system can reflect these standards to make education data over the counter for users and thus easy to understand and easy to use for educators. The site also has templates to make it easy for you to create your own reference sheets and reference guides for your own reporting environment. And all of these resources and more, they're all free, of course, um, just so that they can help as many educators and students as possible. And I was so worried that I'd run out of time, so I'm sorry I went quite fast there. Um, but this does conclude my presentation. Thank you so much for your time and for all you do for students. I don't know. Ness, do you have a question? Because Ness is one who has to, uh, or she might, Ness might tell you what she's in charge of at her school. Are you there, Ness? Oh, excellent. Hi, she Jenny. may have, yeah, she may have stepped away. We'll have a look when the microphone is active. Mm -hmm. But, oh, Ness, can you grab the microphone and tell Jenny, uh, what your chat, what your role is at school, and your role in relation to data collection and reporting me. Sorry, has it gone in? Okay. Today, oh, there it goes. Yes, it's it right now. Yeah. Hi. Hi, um, I'm, um, I'm a leader of pedagogy at my school, and what that means is that I work within the school, mainly with the teachers to improve the quality of the delivery of our education content. But part of my job is I have to take all the data that we are given, um, which comes from NAPLAN, which is a national assessment that everyone in, every student in year three, five, seven and nine does in Australia. So I have to take that data and all other data that we collect from various yeah. things and put it all together to come up with um, <laughs> what, what, what is it we need to focus on as a school to improve the, mm -hmm. the outcomes for our students? So, um, you know, you're often pulling information from three or four different sources to try and put it all together. So, it would um, something like this would certainly help to consolidate all of that information. Sure. Sure. Oh, thanks. That's good to hear. Ours is, ours is the same situation in the U.S. We have, you know, whatever data system we're given or using, uh, it's the same thing where you really have to take what you get but then change it, you know, and put it together with other things to get something that's actually really effective with staff. Oh, I think no, I lost I'm, I'm you there. Oh, there we go. Well, I, I, I love those comments. And Sorry, I'm, I'm going to... Oh, great. Oh, I'm sorry, Ness. It's cutting in and out. I can't hear you at all now. I heard you earlier, which was great. I loved, I loved hearing that. Oh, there you are, I think. Oh, no. Gone again. Try again. And I'm always... Uh, when, it, when I do present, you know, with at, at other oh, she's gone oh, again. Um, Ness, hang on, we'll take the mic privileges off again. Mm -hmm. Hang on, we'll give you a moderator. Will that help? Just see if that stops the mic cutting in there. Try now, Ness. Oh, good. Okay, let's see how we go. It could be just because I'm in five rooms at the moment. 
So um, it's just one of those things. Um, but yeah, I think one of the more difficult things of my job is to take all of that data and try and put it all together. When I'm a primary school teacher, I'm not specifically trained in um, data analysis and all of those sorts of things. And the training that I've received has been fairly um, yeah. basic, I guess. And so I guess the, the fact that I don't mind looking at graphs yeah. and I can interpret them quite well and, and the numbers and things like that, um, I think that I've yeah. got some really good ideas from here and I think that yeah, this sort of tool would be very useful. Oh, thank you so much. It's so good to hear. Yeah, I always, I always think all of that time that's spent on data, it would be so, so, so much more effective if we could instantly get the answers from our data systems and then we could use that time talking about, you know, we're thinking about, well, what should we now do? Now that we know the data suggests this, what should we now do? You know, this, of course, using multiple measures and so on. Um, I, I, I love, I love when I talk to people from other countries, I find that our situation is so common, you know, everybody's, everybody's in the same boat no matter the country and it, it's nice to know that so many people care about this topic and, and are interested in, in improving the way data is reported so that we can better help our kids no matter where we are. One of my concerns is any other well, I have a comment. Comments? My concern mm -hmm. is that we have the NAT plan testing and now you can go out and buy all these books on NAT plan so students just study that, teachers just teach to that NAT plan, etc. And I don't know that the data that is collected is being terribly accurate yeah. when you know we're almost making that a, a curriculum. I don't know what you do yeah. about that. Yeah. It's the same thing here. Often people get so focused on the data and they don't, and that's one area that the help system can really help out with is they don't, they haven't had training in, in how to how to balance it with other things and, and that sort of thing. And because um, we have the same thing here, um, ours isn't the NAP plan, but we've had our different state tests like the STAR and now we're shifting to the Common Core uh, assessment, which is going to be more national, more of the states are jumping in, um, but it's, it's the same same problem here. Well, Jenny, uh, this has been a really interesting oh, uh, part of the organization that does not plan. Yeah. Sorry. They're, they're taking a little bit of that teach to the test away because Oh no, it cut out. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't hear anything. No, it, can you see the red dots on Ness's mic? Oh, there you go, she's putting it in the chat for us. Oh, um, the other thing oh, is to I drop the mic and start again, Ness. But maybe, <laughs> um, I don't know how to keep this conversation going, but with all our technical hiccups, <laughs> we, may, <laughs> we may leave it there. <laughs> oh, there you go, so Ness is putting that in, so they're giving two text types. Okay. And does it be, be the prompt? Oh, great, one. great. Oh, yeah, so okay. they can't just teach to the test. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's, it's been such a pleasure talking to you both, and I, I, I so appreciate your helping with all the technical things. and stopping and restarting the, the recording and I, I would have been very stressed out if you were here. I would have been very worried. So well, I appreciate you being here. Jenny, I think you've been great. You've persisted. You kept coming back in and you didn't seem <laughs> to be frazzled at all because it's not easy when you're dropping out the room and you're the presenter. But no trouble. <laughs> no problem. So Jenny, this is actually recorded. And when okay. you go back to the recording, I think you'll find it just sounds like it never stopped at all. Um, so oh, well done. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. A very yeah, interesting journey. Thank you so much. And it, it oh, and yes. scope of our conference. Yeah, a different topic. So thanks. Thanks, Jenny. 
So when you leave Thank the you room, the recording link will be given. Now let me just take people to the next screen uh, because we've got badges for people who might want to put it on their online spaces. Um, and once we leave the room, the recording will be there. Thanks again, Jenny, and lovely to be in your session with you. Thank you so much. Take care.